Alright, so um, this is like a second part to this uh, tutorial of making uh, some of this line work to look uh, sort of like a, one of those 70s style drawings or whatever. Um, I'm going to group everything I've done so far into its own group. So um, Shane from Melbourne told me that uh, Shift G, I think it is, groups everything, or Control G. Yeah, Control G. You can pick a whole bunch of layers and it will just group them for you when you hit Control G. So I'm going to group them into part one, so I can just, uh, I know everything that I've already done is in there, and I can uh, turn them on and off, so we've gone from that to that. Um, the next thing we're going to have a look at is sort of, um, if you have a look at this map, you can see there's like line work, um, sort of texturing some of the areas, for, I guess different biomes, there's like little spurts of grass around here for marshes I suppose, and um, underneath trees I've got these like sort of like horizontal lines sort of rendering out different um, landscapes and stuff. So that'll be the first thing we have a look at. Um, and okay, to do that, I am going to make a new image and we're actually going to create a texture of that and uh, let's say 128 by 128 for an image. It's going to be a texture so it will repeat itself. Um, first thing we'll do is we will look at Creating this uh, this line work down here, right? Um, actually, no. We'll do we'll do this the grassy sprouts first because that's a little bit easier and we're slightly more advanced. And I'll show you how to do a bit later. Um, so take your take your brush and just sort of actually just straight up draw some some little bits of grass like that, right? Maybe a little rock or, you know, whatever here or there. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so we've got a decent little thing happen there. Um, we'll flatten it. And then we'll go, once, we, once you've got like a little tile that you think you can use um, repeatedly, go edit and then go to define pattern. Okay. When you go to define pattern, this dialog will come up and we'll set that to um, grass, I guess, grassland. Right. That's the pattern that we're using. Um, we've got that. Now we'll head back here. Um, I'm not sure exactly where we should put that. Um, let's say, I mean, we've got this layer structure here already. So what we'll do is we'll create on top of the landmass, but probably underneath the river because we want to be able to be a bit sloppy. And I'll show you what that will mean. Um, so make a layer on top of landmass, but underneath river. And when you do that, it will automatically have a clipping plane on it because the river one does as well, which is really handy. We set this to grass. Okay, um, grab a brush. It can be any brush really, but um, I'm going to use a sort of a, a bit of a crunchy one because uh, crunchy is good. You can use a regular round one if you want to, but set it to you know a size that's sort of appropriate for sort of just nutting out the borders of where things are going to go. And then we're going to, um, we can probably paint it in black without anything mattering too much. But, um, let's say we want to make all that area grass. Okay. Set, put a layer style on this. Uh, pattern overlay. Yeah. And then you'll get uh, a menu here where you can pick the pattern and set that to your thing that you've just created. Yeah. See what's going on there? Um, and it's literally just painting that on for you. So you can just sort of start texturing whatever bit of the map you want in that um, grassy sort of stuff, which is neato. Um, the other thing you can have a look at in the in the menu is if you if you double click that, you can bring up this menu again. You can change the scale, um, which you may or may not want to do. I mean, the more you scale it down, it's just like texturing in 3D. The more you scale it down, the more noticeable the repetition will be. Um, I'm just going to leave that at 100, I think, just for the sake of it staying pretty, um, sake of it staying pretty crisp, I guess. So let's say, I mean, there's not heaps of um, grassland on that reference image. It's just sort of spattered around here and there. So let's say that'll do. We've got our little grass overlays. Okay, it's kind of neat. Um, the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to we're going to create this. This pattern here, this sort of line work going horizontally. 
and um, it's a little bit more involved than um, the the grassy stuff, but um, not too much. So what we'll do is we'll get a, a three pixel brush. I mean, those two. So three is what I'm working in most of the time on this map. So I'll keep it in three. Set it to whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, and I'm going to start drawing these lines right in different different uh, different lengths. But the important thing is don't go too close to any of these edges. Just sort of keep it as like a circle in the middle. Yeah. So um, this seems a little bit tedious doing it by hand, but um, if you do it by hand, it will look done by hand. If that makes sense, and you want it to look like it's done by hand. So if I wanted it to look programmatic and like a computer did it. I would do. A filter instead of doing this, or you know, I would duplicate things. Okay, so that's that's enough. Um, but you notice I've avoided all the edges. Then what we're going to do is go filter other offset. Okay, and then the ideal thing to do is uh, we know our image is 128 by 128, and half of that you will know is 64. So we've offset that, and what it's done is literally um, I'll show you what the offset filter actually does. And you can, it'll basically scroll the image across, yeah, but it will repeat it in all directions, just like a texture. So now we've got this little plus sign to fill in in the middle, um, and then you just fill that in, right? Fill it in whatever way feels right. Just sort of go by your instincts. This works for anything, by the way. If I was drawing something other than horizontal lines, it would still be the same. Um, try to avoid going all the way to the edges when you're using this technique to make a seamless texture. Um, we will offset it again later to fill in these little tiny bits of edge. Okay, uh, it's not too bad. That's it's pretty much getting where I want it to be. Um, we'll offset once more. Oops, wrong thing. We'll offset once more, and um, we'll set it a little bit lower this time. Now we can just see there's little holes, and that's where those um, those parts we were looking at. Um, hmm, I don't like that line. I'm going to get rid of it. The other thing to keep in mind: this is a repeating texture, so the stuff you paint in is going to be repeated again and again and again. So if you don't like it, get rid of it. Okay, so we've got our line texture, and that we know is seamless because we can offset it as many times as we want. And we can't see any uh, seams. Okay, so again, uh, define pattern under edit, and then we'll say marsh, for example. And it's the same deal again. We'll make a oops, just click the wrong layer. Make a new thing in my bob, new layer, um, in the same structure as the grass. And again, that's got the clipping plane applied by default. Let's set it to 90 or so. Okay, start painting. If we don't want it black, so we'll just um, pattern overlay. Pick our little marsh dealio. And that's painting marshes there. So I'm going to basically paint all around these. Uh, uh, I don't like how chunky that is actually. I'm going to get rid of some of those. Um, you can basically tailor it however you want, and you can erase it as if you're using a normal brush, right? Um, in this case, I think um, it starts to become obvious when there's a um, a faded edge on the brush. If you if you zoom in, it's sort of it's fading out a little bit, and I don't totally like that. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use one of these, I guess, so it's not as obvious what's going on. Something with a harder edge. It's it's a matter of taste. You can do whatever you want to do. Just sort of clean it up a little bit. Um, now, again, just going back to the reference. I mean, everywhere there was a forest, he seems to have patched that in as well. So I'll assume there's going to be a forest here one day. Down the bottom right, just because, literally, because I saw it in the bottom right on that other image, and I might as well just rip it off. 
with its own loop, for example. Um, I think it looks good to sort of draw some uh, marshlandy sort of stuff in, around on these uh, little guys as well. And remember, we've got the clipping plane on, so I can paint in the water. It won't matter if I, plant, uh, if I paint here. It's all good. It'll show up. Uh, I'll marshify this side of that as well. So it's looking okay at the moment. Paint some more around here. I guess we'll do some forestry in there as well. Um, which is looking okay, I think. Um, uh, I will do trees next, I think. Yeah, I will. Um, we're going to do trees in a new group, I think. And we'll call that stamps. Okay. Um, the other thing I'll mention really quick about these, uh, these layers with the texture on them. If you want to do a legend later on, you can just box this out. Well, not there, obviously, but, um, with the, with the, with the layer style on, you can just create a box and it will have the, the texture in it, right? And then just have that in the top left or whatever for your, um, your, your, your key. Okay. So I'm going to create a thing called stamps and we're going to, save ourselves some time again and we're gonna say draw some little trees this is gonna be kind of like what we did with texturing but we're gonna use uh, stamps to clone these objects um, I'll draw them on the land for now actually now just again to have a look at how these are done like style wise they're just like little, basically little circles and cones on on sticks um, so what's the best way to do that um, I'm going to get uh, a greeny brush. It's only going to be a little bit more green because we, I mean, you can see here it's not, it's not hugely opaque. But we'll um, I'll paint a little circle. Um, paint a little little cone shape too. For starters, um, then we'll get some different kind of. Uh, yellowy ones, little cone shape, uh, little circle, and then maybe just one more kind, a little bit darker maybe, little circle, and little cone shape. And that's close enough. Um, if you don't get these perfect, it's actually okay, because if you're trying to go for a hand-drawn look, um, hand-drawn stuff actually is never really perfect. So, I'm just drawing line work around them, which again, is not perfect at all. Cool. That'll do. So, um, I don't like that line work, actually. I'm going to go back and... Uh, Get rid of all that and go to maybe line weight of two. Alright. That's uh, an important thing. Um, line weight is a. Uh, you sort of bring emphasis to different things using line weight in 2D art. So it's an important thing to check. Yeah, that looks a little bit better to me. Okay, they, they are going to be like our little prototype things. Okay, so put them out in the water somewhere. This layer, this, oh, well, these will be erased, um, as we go. We're not going to use those anymore. Okay. Um, then we're going to use something called coin stamp, which looks like that. Um, if it looks any different, just hover over it until we see coin stamp, maybe. Um, sit your, you can see if I try and paint over one of those, it will catch ones to the left and right. So set your diameter of the coin stamp to something sort of small. Yeah, so it's just kind of like one of these. And what you do with client stamp is you alt click, you hold alt and click, and then it will let you paint things everywhere. So just before we do that, I might give these a really slight sharpening, which is uh, go unsharp mask. You have a little bit more control over unsharp mask. Um, let's say just that much, just so that they're not completely sort of hand drawn -y looking. Anyway, um, alt click. Just literally click on one of these and you can paint with it, right? Um, I think if you go aligned, yes, if you turn off aligned, you can just keep painting with it. 
Okay, so that is now your little brush, and you can uh, go absolutely mental with it. Yeah, pretty neat, sorry. Just draw some of these everywhere. Okay, pick the next one. Um, the other thing that you might want to do is pick a couple of these, pick some of those. Oop, that's getting it. Like I said, um, you want to be careful about what um, what you pick when you use that tool because it will, if you get the thing next to it, you you've got some problems. Um, just make sure that when it when the tool is hovering over it, you've only got the one you want to actually copy. Um, okay, cool. Um, just make a little cluster of them, sort of. This is uh, some of the funnest stuff you do because it's very efficient and um, you can do something that looks kind of neater pretty fast. Again, I've got some sampling issues. <sighs> okay, so I've got a little cluster there, right? Um, if I turn a line back on, and pick anywhere in that in that group. I can paint, and it will it will fill in what I had there. So I can duplicate that. Um, do some more of this business. Pick it from over here. Start it over there. Got some trees, buddy. Yeah. Um, so I mean, that's fairly self-explanatory. What explanatory? What I'm doing there. Um, I'm going to make a smaller cluster of them just so that I can uh, get some more control, I guess, with that one. But what I'm doing without having to turn a line back on and without having to um, do heaps of one by one trees, I'll just sort of fill out some some bulk. Um, this was going to be a forest, wasn't it? And that's um, and again, uh, what you've already put down, you can sample that too. So I've got an even bigger comp there, so I can just put down. Okay, um, I'm going to just skip the video forward to when I've filled in a lot more of these because this I don't want you to just have to watch all this crap. Um, so yeah, I'll just do this. Uh, Okay, so I just zoomed forward to um, me having clone stamped a whole bunch of this uh, tree cover onto different parts of my map. Um, I'm just going to do a couple more just to show you. Um, you know, there is still just all pretty much cheating by just copying bits of the same image. And I mean, I only drew like what was it six trees? Yeah, six trees, and that's um, just repeating them everywhere and just going crazy with them. Um, just to mix things up a bit, um, you know. If you start feeling like there's too much repetition, just put some single ones around the place just to sort of make it so that there's a transition from fully wooded areas to sort of not so fully wooded areas, which is great descriptive words for you guys. Um, but you know, my brain's only sort of half. And you know, you clean up things like this as well if you've got any little bits of half captured trees here and there. I mean you don't have to be totally crazy with it, but um, just take a little look around and see how it's going. Um, now because I don't need these guys anymore, I'm just going to uh, control X to cut them, paste them in again somewhere else, but on a separate layer and um, say tree stands and set the and turn that off because you don't need those there. And set this to say trees. So now we've got a lot like a tree, a treed up map, it's all tree, which is kind of cool. Um, and now we're starting to see that there's a um, there's a bit of a too much contrast between what's going on underneath and um, the trees because they're actually colored and it's starting to really look out of place now. So what we can do is um, we can take, we can create a new layer in here, right, in this structure, still in the clipping mask, back in our original thing down towards where the uh, landmass is. Put that on top of everything except rivers. So put it on top of your um your marshes and your and your and your um grassy stuff. And underneath river and say let's say that's um 
minus color. Um, and again, that's got the clipping mask on, so it's only going to show up when it's on the landmass. And then we can take this and just box it out. Um, that's obviously way too strong of a color. That's just too much. It doesn't look great. Um, so what we're going to do is, when we've got that, that, that color sort of just boxed out, go into hue and saturation. We can sort of pick something maybe a little bit more towards yellow and a little bit lighter. Okay. Um, one thing you can do is, oh, I've still got some, some tree stampage happening over here that I want to get rid of, which bothers me because I'm kind of like that. Now, as you can see, um, because we've dropped color right on top, back down in our main layer structure, it's it's nuking all this um, this texture we've got. Um, set that to multiply, and everything's still there. So that's kind of cool. Um, then we might want to set this river color to something else. I mean, what have they done in the source image? It's kind of like a green greeny looking color. Um, I might make that just a little bit lighter again just because I like that and a little bit more towards yellow. So we've got your trees and all that kind of stuff and they're still a little bit differentiated from what's going on on the land. Um, so now we're going to go down to the river and make that like a, a green sort of color. Maybe something like that. Come on. Oh, it's not painting in properly. Um, just box it out. Oh, that's way too strong. That's okay. We can uh, set it to say that. Um, okay, now as you can see, our rivers are still in grey. So, thingo, uh, eyedropper that. Find your rivers, which is easy because we've named them. Turn this on. And that's almost like a clipping mask just on that layer. And then you can box over the top of them and it will just fill them in. That's preserved transparency. And that means that anything you do, it will only paint over what's already not transparent. And remember, we've got these little things we added in later. Uh, do the same with them. These little corrections to the nows of the rivers. So that's that's looking kind of neato now, I guess. Um, what else have we got? We've got, uh, we've got hills. That's a little bit... That's pretty much... We'll do that the same way as the um, as the trees. Uh, I won't go too crazy on hills because um, you know that's um, that'll just make the video go for ages. So I'm just going to grab a black pen on line weight two and um, have a look at how they've done it here. Um, if you want to match this kind of style, you've just got to go back to the source image and have a look at how they've done it. Pretty much that's all there is to it. Um, I'm going to just do some little some some rounded sort of looking hills like these ones. Um, so, just say one little lump, then sort of shade it a little bit like they've done. And then maybe sort of a bit of this kind of stuff here. Um, that's just one on its own. Having one thing on its own to stamp is always pretty good. But you know, also, uh, we'll do another one. And, uh, have them in the two. So that's kind of handy. Um, then maybe this is something we're going to need to do a fair few variations on, probably. Um, like this, maybe. And remember to keep your style consistent and your lighting source consistent. Okay, so we got some some hills. Uh, again, they're looking a little bit blurry from there. So I'm just going to unsharp mask real quick, just so they have a little bit more sharpness to them. That probably won't show up in the video what's going on there, but you know, that's okay. And again, just good old clone stamp with a lined on because uh, we might. Uh, I'll show you what we can do when we've got a lined on. Um, when we've got a line, we can grab just here, for example. We can see what we're painting, so we can connect that up with that, so it looks like that's you know that hill is behind the other hill. And uh, so we've got a bunch of hills coming up here. This is faster than drawing them all by hand, a lot faster. This is the kind of stuff Photoshop is really great at. Um, some more. Again, 
Uh, generally, with this kind of thing, you want to paint from top to bottom, sort of, so that um, you can figure out how things are going to occlude. But I think with hills, maybe bottom to top is better because you can do stuff like that, um, sort of joining them up, um, making them look like they occlude each other and whatever. Having stuff going sort of off the screen is really cool as well because it sort of gives the illusion that there's more to the map that isn't actually there. So just having like little, oh, that's no good. Ah, that'll, that's fine. I'll just leave it. Um, having, like giving the illusion that the, the map goes on other than what you've drawn is always cool. Like just, it just sort of suggests that there's something else going on off the edge. So we've got some hills in there, which is neat. Or this. Oh, I'm going to erase those because it doesn't make sense to have a little stone that close to the river. Um, grab a solitary one, put it in there. Again, I'm not going to go to overkill, just sort of enough to give you the right idea. I'm just going to leave those lines there. See, you can have little happy accidents like that sometimes. You just catch a bit of line work that will just look right anyway, and you just leave it there. Pick one of these, continue that. Well, that's no good. You can't have a uh, hill body into the river. Um, I think that'll do for uh, just compositionally. This is um, pedantic as usual, but um, compositionally, I just want a few more over here. So there's some sort of features over on the towards the uh, towards the water. Now, if you don't repeat things too much, the repetition won't be noticeable. So, there, you've got your hills there. Okay, so that's cool. Um, I think we're done for line work. Um, next tutorial, we will go and do some colouring and texturing sort of stuff. So, I hope you enjoyed what we got so far. Um, see you in the next video.